Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Palmazano here. And I get an email from Mike Anderson entitled Green Sky Bluegrass. Now, Green Sky Bluegrass, uh, I have been aware of for a while. One of my very close friends, Leah Greenwald, uh, here in Baltimore, uh, is a huge Green Sky fan. She's always talking about them. And uh, I have not reviewed any of their tracks. So he sends me past my prime. Now, I'm not sure if I've heard past my prime, but like I said, I am familiar with uh, Green Sky Bluegrass. If you guys are new to this channel, what we do here is, unlike other reaction channels, we break down the tune. It's as if you were a student, you brought a song in and said, hey, Michael, I'd like to learn this. We listen to it, we try to get the broad strokes, rhythm, melody, harmony, lyrics if we can, and try to break down what the song is, what makes it what it is, and some key takeaways for you to work on uh, on your own time. Let's do it. I've been walking for hours, but I'm almost where I said that I would be. Just like on television, this hot. Love it when they jump the verse like that. Three minutes and 29 seconds, you can tell right away they're cutting all the fat out of it. It's always, always a, a difficult thing and something that always catches my ear when I hear uh, bands, you know, artists, writers, whatever. Um, remove everything that doesn't have to be there. That jumping of the verse, I, I mean, it's awesome. I love that stuff. Huge bluegrass fan. Now, let me show you what's going on here. We're in G, the people's key for bluegrass. Start with... Right there. Now, remember in bluegrass, there's no percussion. So, everyone's percussion. So, you really get that... To me, what I hear is that on the hi-hat, and that snare of the mandolin coming in with just that G major muted uh, little strike. And then. Two, three, one. And then the banjo, I believe, answers it. Yep. Little pushes in there. So you got a one, G major, six, E minor, four, C. And in between each one, you got that. And all the parts are broken up, meaning a different instrument plays each one of those parts. That's proper arranging. And one of the main things that got me to fall in love with bluegrass is that, again, because there's no percussion and everybody has to mimic the percussion to create that drive, that tied with playing things in different registers by different instruments creates that one big full sound. Uh, acoustic percussionless musicianship like this on display is why I I mean, is why I went down the bluegrass rabbit hole for so many years. And if you guys are wondering, how am I picking this up out of the air, right? The answer is, I'm not. 95% of bluegrass songs are in G. It's a 1-6-4, one, one of the most common progressions ever. It's completely diatonic. And all the melodies and parts so far are just using the 1, 2, and 3. 2, 3, 1. And then here. 3, 2, 1. Three. Sorry. So, basic music theory, right? Common chord progressions played extremely well. That's what you get with bluegrass. Twenty-seven dollars in an old jean jacket and there's dust under the collars. I've been walking for hours, but I'm almost where. I said that I would be 
face like gold till that that I love how he's painting the picture of 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 the man, right? What he's wearing, the money in his pocket, because no matter how much money you got in the bank, cash in your pocket changes your whole vibe, right? Dust under the cat collar. I'm almost there where I'm supposed to be. Melody, straight, straight major. <laughs> So the first time through, twenty-seven dollars. Three to one. So three to the one. Right over to the five. dust under the Right, going over to the E, which is the root of your sixth chord you're going to. I've been walking for hours, but I'm almost with. Going to the four, root of the four chord. So we're going to the four chord, C, and we're singing to that C. So your melodic takeaways, at least your bass line, what they're introducing, is over the one chord, third. Fifth to the one, then when it goes to the sixth, going five, flat three, one of the sixth chord, and then going right to the root of the four chord before you resolve back to the one. So again, this is bluegrass, simple, but hard to do right. Really appreciate it. I said that I would be Right there, jump in the verse. You think there's more beats left, right? But you just take out that middle part. I love decisions like that in writing. I said that I would be just like gold television. This heart full of ambition has been haunting my dream, reaching for grander things, and I never really knew they could be mine. Yeah. And I'm out. Mustache. All right, I do love these guys. I love, I love the sincerity and the intent uh, that you that 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 is exudes. You know, they exude right. It's coming out of them. They live it. They believe it. They love it. Um, such a cool chorus. Same chords. You still got the sixth E minor and C the four chord. Uh, but the way they kind of push through it and sing over the bar line. You listen to it. You're like, I am kind of missing something here but if you listen to it a few times it'll become obvious because i think the count stays the same just the feel of the push over the line is what moves and the things that i never really knew they could be mine and i'm out way past my pride hear that push Yeah, so you're still counting four. And I like how they, when they go into the chorus, they don't jump the beat the one time. But that little push, I think it's end of two. I don't know. I'd have to go back and count it again. But you're still, you're still four beats a measure, right? But just that those little inflections, that makes it.
See how they don't jump it there? They let they let that one continue. So much movement be- behind the scenes here. I just listen, listen, you know, listen to the dobro, you know, listen to the bass. There's so much, there's so much pushing. You know, I, I made a video a while back because it said pushing and pulling the changes. Something I learned in bluegrass, starting to move to the next change before it actually gets there. And not everyone does it. Not everyone has to do it. Or the opposite is, the converse, is catching up to it after it already get, after the rest of the band already gets there. There's so many little pieces of, of that moving in there. Let me see if I can point one out to you. So, I would not escape One more drink and I'm in it once Useless mess Just a helpless man With no self-defense If I'm not yours What are you looking for? Hear that do, 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 Right before it goes down. If I'm not yours What are you looking for? I love this guy. You can see that the whole band is pushing on this, you know, boom, 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 boom. But he's, the way he's feeling it and delivering it, he's feeling that inner pulse, right? It's that, it's that you have the strict lines, but you're swimming in it. Just watch his body language. That's what I mean by intent. If my knees are bleeding when I see if I try to save face before I make it to where I sit out and swore that I would find yeah. then I'm my that little run there, that little run there to pull you to pull you into the next chord. What I would find then I'm out. Like how in the end he looked right into the camera. I dig it. I dig it. I forgot how good these guys were. Leah, now I know why you mentioned them so much. Um, obviously, I'm a huge bluegrass fan. Have been for a very long time. Uh, love so many things about the genre. Uh, and seeing good bands, really, really good bands, who break up all what you would otherwise think a simple tune into a handful or more of specific parts that have a rhythmic purpose and a harmonic purpose and a melodic purpose. And they all blend together. And it becomes more than just a one, six, four with major melodies. There's so much more going on in there. The pulling and pushing of the chords like I was talking about, right? There's also something that I've always loved about bluegrass which is that you have to self-mix. These are acoustic bands. See, in the old-time bluegrass, where they all around one microphone and come in and out, especially like they were doing here, like with the harmonies, I'm telling you, that's top-level musicianship. Don't, don't confuse simplicity, right? Simplicity for, um, 
you know, not being as impressive, not being as as honing your craft, not having the sharpest knife, I'm, I'm, I lack for words. Let me put it this way. Jazz, you know, we're always endlessly impressed by jazz, metal players, really, really complicated stuff. But I believe, I believe it was Chopin that said, at the end of the day, after more and more notes have been played, it's simplicity that is the crowning achievement of art. And to me, there's something about acoustic music, self-mixed, simple progressions, simple melodies, simple stories about people that cuts right through to the heart and removes everything else. It, it is probably my favorite genre. It absolutely changed my life when I got into bluegrass when I was out in GIT. And uh, Green Sky, you guys do it fantastically. I know you're gonna come through Baltimore again, and I will be there hopefully with my friend Leah. And uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing. And if you'd like to learn more about my approach to the instrument and how I teach my students, I would invite you to click the first link in the description and join me over at guitargate.com. It's got all my courses, all my lessons, step-by-step, step, and of course, it supports all the free stuff here on YouTube. I thank you so much. Bye-bye. I need to do more bluegrass. Settle. <laughs>